this here was where the old um, separator was to separate the cream from the milk. Um, and it had a pulley going back down to there. Then there was another axle sort of thing going through there like a camshaft. And then the old um, single stroke motor used to be mounted here. That there was a, a pump that went back to the fours that used to activate the, um, the, the suckers on the on the udder for the milk, so you get your vacuum form and then suck it all through and then put it in here, separate the cream. Had cream tin sitting down here and it had a big drum here where the, um, what do they call the bit that comes off, not curdle, what do they call, separate, if you take milk, cream out of milk, you'll end up with like a creamy water. Whey, hey? whey? Is it whey? Whey, whey. whey. Yeah. yeah, and we used to have a big drum here. It had a pipe that used to go out somewhere and we had the pigsty sitting right down the back down there, so that used to go down to the oh, pigsty because you'd mix the, the whey with the with grain for the pigs. Yeah. And then separators used to go through the top here. And then we had, you can still see some of the old bales, the old milk bales down here. I think if memory there was probably four. One, two, three, there might have been a fourth one here. So you put the cows in there and then you put the milking machines underneath them so that there was the gate so there was bales you tie them up here and then you'd open up that and they'd walk out there and this here was the holding yard for the cows of an afternoon that all used to go down to the down to the paddock there near the dam or this one here so it was it was always my job to round up the cows and bring them up into here and we had a laneway down through here there was two fences probably about 50 feet apart and off that was gates going into different paddocks so you could actually put change the, the paddocks around when the when you fed them all. So how old were you when all this was going on? Oh mate, I was only from zero to twelve. Wow. And it's still here to the day that Dad built it. Except for the steel, there was no steel at all. All timber. All, all, what, all types was of it, pine. Was it dirt floors back no, then? No, no, this is still so the this, concrete. This concrete. Wow. Yeah. So all the bits of concrete you can see here are still all, all the original. So it's amazing how long Cypress lasts for. Yeah. Remember it well. You know the photo you've seen of me with the, with the dogs, the two dogs? Yeah. Yeah, right here. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so this old shed was this old shed in the background here behind the cruiser how his dad built this now he's obviously long gone now and this is um still standing cypress and this was the machinery shed Property's own for mines now. Yeah. So this is petrified wood. It's heavy. It's basically rock now, isn't it? Yep. So that, that, that's a tree trunk. Can we burn it? And it all is, is it? Yeah. That's all part of the tree trunk that's just been broken off. Can we burn it? No, oh, yeah, look, there's the grain there. No, you can't burn it. It's wood. It's, it's that. rock now. The grain's cool. in the concrete so that there was air pockets in it and the, the ground so was winter, never cold. It wasn't cold when oh, it really? In winter. Yeah, right. It was controlled temperature and he did then, because my, my, the room I was in was the last bedroom built and was down this end and he had all beer bottles just laid, you know, end for end like that. Mm. 
No, they wouldn't have been in that. That's, 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 that's the front member there. The be in there. looking back over here. Yeah. This was a living area that went up on the timber cypress floors. That was the kitchen, dining room, bathroom at the back. One bedroom over there, the other bedroom there. This was the lounge living area. They extend the study up the front, if I remember rightly. Well, there's the join. Yeah. And then my bedroom was over here. Was it exposed, like lifted yeah. as well? Yeah, and then, and then the, the roof continued on, which was the two car park, parked the cars in. And the old diesel motor at the back there for the, um, Generators. Yeah, see, here's remnants of it. The bottles again. So I'm quite sure it was up this way. If I remember rightly, I don't think that one had the had the glass in it. Was only this one here. There's a lot of glass there. Yeah. Yeah. So this was the second house, was it? Or this, this, this was the first house we built. The original house on the, the property. The original house, yeah. So that was when he was gifted the land, like right back. Where? Yeah, so I, I don't know whether he lived. I know there was a shack down behind where the pigsty used to be. I think he lived in that because he always knew he was going to build up here on the ridge. Yeah. So when they first came in and started clearing all the land and they worked on the dairy and all that stuff, then he built the house here. Yeah, the house was here. Yeah, this is it. So this was probably back in 55, 55, 56 he built the house. Wow. So you know, then he just got pulled down four, five, six months ago because of, by the um, the coal company because a lot of houses that were abandoned out here, they were getting squatters and that in, so they would have been up for public liability and health, you know, reasons or whatever. And that's where Dad used to do the blacksmithing. He had a coal thing, you know, that could wind up and melt a piece of steel up and he used to do all that. He used to make his own tools and stuff like that out here yeah. on, on a bloody, um, what, they call, the, what they call this, um, the big steel anvil. Anvil, yeah. Yep. It was a huge anvil we had. Under the bottle tree? Under the bottle tree because it was nice and shaded. Yeah. Yep. All these trees were here, of course. But, yeah. Would you would have had old tin tanks back then, yeah? Old, old tin tanks, like galvanised tanks? Yes. Water tanks? Yes, yeah. and they used to rust out. We had them yep. at the back of the house here. When I was here last time, it was still here, but it was just perforated with holes. Yeah. A lot of sandstone here. Is there? Yeah, because Vinegar Hill, if we go up there and go back out, you actually they've cut through the hill a bit. Yeah. It's just sheer yeah, sandstone on both sides, you know. Is there a reason why it's called Vinegar Hill? No, I don't know why. Yeah, there's a bottle tree there, isn't it? Yeah, just not much of a bottle. There. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's a bit bigger, that one. Up on along the ridge there, the boar's up there, so you can see where the cattle yard is up there. Yep. That's where the boar is up there. Yep. And right along that ridge, on that side, the soil went a bit sandy, so all that area there was covered in cypress pine. And that's what he's, hence all the cypress has been yeah. built here. And the house was all built. We had a, he's had his own big um, saw set up down behind the dairy there, in the back pen. There. Oh, like a mill? Like a mill. Yeah. yeah. And we used to cut all his own timber and everything. And yeah, right. So that bore, that would have been reasonably deep in the ground, being so high on the hill, wouldn't it? Well, no, it wasn't that deep. Uh, we went down twice. I can't remember the exact depth, but that's where we went down about 20 feet and hit coal. And the guys doing the drilling said the coal was so thick they didn't think they'd hit water. But once they got down below it, they hit water, sandstone. It wasn't pumping a great deal of water at the time. Um, we couldn't afford to go any deeper, so we used it. But the water was um, a bit salty, I suppose, or a bit chemically. From the coal? I'd say so. Yeah. And um, a few, quite a few years later, we came back and they went down deeper. And um, <clears throat> we hit good water. Cattle liked it. Where the first lot they didn't like it. It was like a lot of um, sulphur in it from, you know, from the gas and everything. Does it have a smell like that yeah, stink? Yeah. Yeah. And even when we'd had, we'd run the pump to fill the there was a turkey's nest up there to fill that up to to feed the troughs. 
of a night time we'd switch the pump off with that had a hose coming out and we used to light and the gas used to burn off it used to come in during the, the day while you're pumping oh, okay so every night we'd go up there and light up and this gas burn and be burning for hours just the fumes gas that yeah. was in the mm, wow. tents. that's why there's so many gas for mm. So this is so this was the original turkey's nest. This, yeah, is, this is where it was. Yeah. yeah. So you guys dug this? Yeah. 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 You didn't actually dug, dig it. All you did was you just push dirt up around and create a circle. Okay. So the water that came out of the bore went into that. It would settle, and then you just record, you, you put it at the highest point, and just gravity fed to different troughs, troughs and, for yeah. the cattle and all that sort of stuff. Yeah. But yeah, that, that's where we the original spot where we put it down. So this is the western side of the property out here. Yeah, that's west that way, yeah. yeah. It's just beautiful. And then over there you can see the old ball casing where the so, ball went so down. So this is the ball we were talking about earlier? Yeah. 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 Which is prehistoric too. Yeah, it would be now. So they were steel casings obviously yeah. when they put them yeah. down. Yeah, yeah. They were about a four inch steel case. Yep. And they'd push that down. And this, was, this is where they hit coal at about 20 feet and it was quite deep the thickness of the coal was quite deep hence that's why they so you did you run on yeah she's all seized yeah. did you run on petrol diesel back then or no it was um it was a diesel um i can't remember the old clip no no i can't remember the name of the pump but what you had was it was a like a up and down sort of pump so there was kind of like a client, like a windmill type yeah, deal yeah. yeah but it was run by motor here yeah and that used to just go up and down then it'd suck it up and then pump it over into the into the turkey's nest yeah right and then obviously power came into the equation many years later just goes to show how long that power's been sitting there but yeah. look at that pole yeah the pole still got a meter in it not connected though Time clock and everything. Yeah. That one there's 09 when Anajex came out. Yeah. So any of this yard original out here as well? Okay. Any of these yards out here, the original ones? No. Like obviously, no. Obviously. There's okay. part of the casing. Oh yeah, okay. So that's part of the steel casing. Yeah. What they do was the casing was, was a pipe with a thread in, so you join them together with, with thread. And these ones here, you'd, you'd, as you'd pull it up, you'd have a big tower going up. You'd pull it up and you'd get a join, you undo it, and then you'd screw that one in, put the rope in there and put a pin through there and lift it up to the next stage and do the same thing again. Okay, yep. So that's what they're yeah. all off. Yeah. It's funny how they're just still sitting out here, eh? Yeah. I wonder if it's ever been touched again since you guys did. Because there's some more there on the ground. Yeah. yeah. So that's a joiner, a joiner yep, that's threaded both sides. Yeah, yep. Looks like it's off the old cooler, water cooler thing off the top of the motor because our water cooled motors we had here. Yep. Down the fat housing or something like that. Yeah. Oh, just a rock. Yeah. So check this out for a bit of bush ingenuity this platform here you stand up on the platform all these rods are all going to a different gate so when you're mustering you're sorting cattle you get the idea when the gates aren't locked you pull this rod open and close that one get this rod open and close that one real cool way to do it without getting in there amongst them <laughs> 